Okay, YouTube. So today I'm working on the my four fi or 550 Ford backhoe. It's uh, 1983, I think I said. Let me just check this year here. Yeah, 1983, I believe it is. But anyway, um, so I have the hood off, which that's the hood. That's about the most cumbersome thing to take off, as you can imagine, because it is fairly heavy. Not real, real heavy, but fairly heavy. One person can do it. It's just, you know, a little heavy. So anyway, I want to get the valve cover off because something is cracking in there, and it sounds to me like it's a valve. Uh, but I'm not positive about it, but I'm going to take off whatever I have to get the valve cover off. Now, it doesn't look like it's very hard. There's a breather pipe right in there, which I already took off. That that thing, because the tractor is so old, I just cut it off. It's pretty bad. So, um, uh, yeah, I think you see that. So, anyway, I'll be working on taking these bolts off of the... Uh, valve cover and hopefully I don't have to do nothing to the air cleaner but if I do I do but for right now I just want to get this thing apart because it's October and it's about 75 degrees and any day now the temperature is going to drop and I'm going to be outside working on this in the cold and I really don't want to do that. Okay guys so I got all the bolts out of the, the um, valve cover and what we're going to do is I'm going to see if it's, it'll come off without me taking this big air canister stuff off because there's a bunch of bolts in there for that. Not that I wouldn't, but you know, if I don't have to, I won't. I just want to get to see what the valves look like. I'm thinking something is not right there. So whatever I see here, you're also seeing as, as well as I am for the first time what's actually going on. Well, that seems like a lot more play than what it ought to have. I guess I ain't going to be able to salvage this cover gasket. Oh well, it's always something. So I'm thinking here that nothing's like off. I would have swore that there was a something going on with one of the exhaust valves, but so let's try and line this up. We have three exhaust outlet. So this is an exhaust valve. This is an exhaust valve. And this is an exhaust valve. So we are going to check out what the tolerances there are. You think it's a dirty job? I'm going to go get a feeler gauge and we're going to just see what some of this stuff says as it is. Alright guys, so I got a feeler gauge here and I'm just going to show you that <laughs> right now this intake valve is down so that means that the exhaust valve is completely up. And I've got a 25 thousandths feeler gauge in there which this thing at the most I'm pretty sure is 18 thousandths. Now I have to go check that and I will go check it in, in a second here. Let me see. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got two, I've got a 24 and a 25, and both of them are slipping in there. So I've got 50 thousandths clearance at the valve. Do you think that that might be a problem? Man, am I glad that it's, I hope this is it. I'm pretty sure this is probably it. The worst thing about this is I'm happy with that problem, okay? If it was anything worse, I, I didn't think it was internal engine, but... It was just driving me crazy. I couldn't figure out why this thing's not working right. So hopefully I can adjust these valves and this will be solving my problem. 
Okay guys, a little background on this. This engine is a is what's known as a 201 cubic inch, which is actually pretty big for a three cylinder. A 201 cubic inch diesel engine, okay? You can see the injectors and stuff. And the valves get adjusted. There's a range of that of number, like between this and that. So what I did was I picked the middle number and that's what I'm gonna do. So the exhaust valves get set at 19 thousandths. The intake valves get set at 17 thousandths. Okay guys, so I adjusted these valves and here's how I did it. On a given cylinder, there's, you know, you have two intake exhausts, okay? So right now you can see that the intake valve is being pushed down. When the intake valve is being pushed down, the exhaust valve is not. So this one has a slight amount of play to it. Now that play is just right. This is 19,000, these are 17,000. So I've adjusted all of them. Now what I was getting was a really hard cracking that sounded like exhaust coming through um, a valve that maybe had, you know, a crack or something in it. But now I'm not getting the cracking. But I think that this muffler is screwing me up a little bit because it seems like the muffler guts are like totally destroyed in it. And, I'm, and, and it just sounds loud to me for some reason. And that's probably what it is. So I think I might replace that. But for right now, I'm going to clean the valve cover uh, gas or the valve cover and then put a new gasket on it using that uh, former gasket stuff. And then I'll put that back on and then we'll see how it runs. Okay guys, so I put the gasket maker on the blue stuff. I put a little bit of this uh, Termitex gasket sealant on the bolts. And uh, I'm going to snug them up now. What I found out with this um, gasket stuff is you really don't want to tighten them too tight. If you get the bolts down there touching the uh, valve cover and then just put a little, you know, a little snug on it. Don't tighten it all the way down and then come back later and tighten them down after this stuff gets hard like in 24 hours. It seems to work a lot better. I would rather have a gasket on here. The problem with the gasket is that I just don't have one. I can order a gasket set for 50 bucks that include the valve cover gasket, but a head ga it's actually a head gasket set. But the problem is if I have to take this apart further, I don't want to be spending money on, you know, both things. I just want to spend it once. So I'm going to try this blue stuff for right now. And then I'll, uh, if this doesn't solve my problem, but I think it will, then I'm going to take the head off and see if there is something wrong with the valve. But for right now, I honestly believe that the problem is pretty much solved, but i got to check. So I'm going to snug up these bolts that are on this valve cover here yet, and that's going to be it for this. I'll try it out and see how it works. Well, guys, I... Uh, adjusted those valves. There's definitely a noticeable difference in how the tractor runs, but it's still missing. So I'm going to have to take the head off next to see what's going on because for some reason it seems as though it's missing on the number three cylinder and I don't know why. So I got to do something with that, check it out, see what's happening. Okay guys, so it took me like four hours to find uh, access to all the parts that I may need for this thing. Um, different things like eBay would have certain size piston rings or whatever or pistons or whatever I might need and I need to have an access to a range of stuff just in case the size they have doesn't fit. But anyway, um, before I do take tobacco apart, what are, and that will probably be, a, I'm going to probably wait a week to do it because I want to make sure I can uh, do it without any other problems and needing the backhoe. So I put a nice 12 foot long, 12 inch diameter, nice and straight, 
pine log in there. Now this log has some infestation in the middle of it, I know for certain. But we'll see what we can get out of it. If we're lucky, I might be able to get siding out of it. If not, I might be able to make some shakes that I can use for uh, shim stock. So anyway guys, that's where we stand today. At the moment, the temperature in the kiln is 80 degrees. Let me check the uh, relative humidity here for you quick. Now the relative humidity is around um, 60 or 55, which is actually pretty good with the kiln, with the um, uh, the um, dehumidifier being in there, because it does use a, and take a lot of moisture out of the wood and put it into the air. It helps to do that because the air is so dry. Now, I don't know if you can see that because it's getting dark already, but the relative humidity outside is 70%, and the temperature is around 55 degrees, but 70% is still pretty high, especially the day that was all sunny. Hey, YouTube. Um, in conjunction with the video that you just saw, the different uh, video clip, I wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, some upcoming pro uh, projects that I actually have that I think that you know you will be interested in but like my videos recently have appeared as if I'm a little bit you know going this way then going that way and doing something else and really that's not the way I want to do things but the problem is when you um, have yourself set up so that you are going to handle whatever comes down the pike and you're getting into old age and you need to have, you can't be spending money buying all new stuff just because you may need some things, okay? So I'm the type of person where, like I bought a, a pickup truck in uh, 2006 and I never drove it. It sits in the garage and I'm waiting for old age to come and old age is coming but I still have other trucks that work good so technically I don't even need to, um, you know, have the truck, but nonetheless I have it, I paid for it, and I deserve to have it, so I do have it. So anyway, um, what I want to talk about here a little bit is um, I want to go over a couple of these different like hows and whys and whens and wheres and you know why I've changed something or not done something that I said I was going to do. So like uh, this time of the year, it becomes really difficult, especially you know if you're if you're elderly, you want to try and prepare a little bit for winter time. So for me and for my wife, what we have to do when it comes to winter is we have to, uh, first we have to wind down the greenhouse. So I'll just write green, greenhouse here. Um, and what that means is that we have to cut all the bushes off at the uh, hydroponic buckets. We filter out the um, uh, the perlite, take take the netting out of the buckets if you're familiar with hydroponics, so that nothing freezes. Because if we leave this stuff in the buckets over winter, it'll freeze solid and crack the buckets, and then I'll have to go buy all new buckets and cut holes in all new buckets and put you know little grommets in all the buckets. And if you're not familiar with that, just go. You can look back into my. Um, channel about some hydroponic stuff that I may have uploaded. I didn't do a lot of it, but I put some of it there. So, uh, so we wind down the greenhouse, right? And then number two, and this is a biggie, and it's because Carmine's not here and not, I don't really have any help because all the kids ran off to go do their thing, right or wrong, promises or not. The point is, is that I have a whole lot of uh, wood out there that I need to get inside because it's it this year has been so bad for drying I, I'm down to like 19 to 15 percent with framing lumber which is normally good but the problem is, is it's just not getting any drier than that and right now it's raining again we had a beautiful sunny day today and now it's raining so you know the hoods off the backhoe it's raining on that and I've got so many things covered with tarps it isn't even funny, so I'm, t I'm sort of tired of doing that. So what I want to do then, num for number two, is I want to put all the lumber that I have into the greenhouse. Now the reason I'm going over this stuff is because it seems to me like, you know, there's a lot of elderly out there who are like my age 
And a lot of people that talk to me or that are older than I am that I'm sure could use a little bit of help from some younger people. You know, if you're in your 50s, 40s, 30s, you might want to take a look at this and maybe you could help someone out a little bit. I'll do mine and I have to do mine because I have no choice. I have no one else to ask. Uh, Carmine's in school and Carmine was a very big help to me all summer long and I'm looking forward to him coming back up as soon as he can. I don't really know what's going on here though because, you know, as grandparents you're the last to know everything. Nobody wants to tell you nothing. So anyway then, um, what's going on with this moisture, uh, with the uh, lumber is uh, I want better moisture control of it, okay? And I'm um, safe for at least seven months between now and the time I have to restart the greenhouse for my wife. So I have seven months that I can leave the, um, uh, the lumber in the greenhouse like I did last year. And then I think what I'm going to do is as I take it out, I'm going to start cutting it into things that I need to do projects with. For instance, a lot of the white pine that I'm going to use, I'm going to be cutting that into spindles for the porch deck that's up at the house. So I need to get that cut, but I want it to dry better. And once it dries better, I'll know whether it's going to stay straight or not. So that, that's one thing I'm going to tackle. Okay, so then the other thing, and you know, this is probably everybody has this. I have a car inspection coming up. Okay, my wife's car is due for inspection. Now my wife and I have been nursing that car for years. I think we bought that thing, oh, in two, oh, in fact I bought it the same day I bought my truck. We bought it in 2006. And I have, because she does a lot of driving and I don't, the, uh, and the road was so bad up until now, it's not too bad, but it's still dirt road. A lot of this stuff sort of like sandblast the underneath of the car body and the rocker panels for the third time since I've lived here need to be replaced. So luckily I have the metal and this is just with a little bit of insight and you guys know what I'm talking about. You, you know you figure you have you plan ahead, you save a couple things, you squirrel away some stuff for a rainy day and that's what I've done. So I have the metal then for that, I have the, uh, the primer, the welders and I have the paint. And you're looking at like two or three days to handle that job, number three. The lumber for the greenhouse, it's probably going to take me about three days to get that in there because I'm by myself. There's um, one, two, three, four, five, there's six skids of lumber totally that have to be put in there. It's not that skid, six skids of lumber, if I was in my 20s and 30s, this would be a half a day job. But for me right now, it's about a three day job. So i got to work on that. All right, and then that inspection is due at the end of this month. So, you know, it's going to take me two or three days to put new rocker panels on that. Um, you know, it depends on what the weather is. If it's going to be raining tomorrow, working out all day, maybe it'll only take a day and a half or two days. But nonetheless, it needs to be done. I'm not paying somebody else to do it. And besides, hardly any body shop wants to touch rust because rust is um, unpredictable. You know, you never know where the rabbit hole ends with rust. But since I've been working on the car, I, I, I know where the solid spots are, so I know where I can weld things and I know where I can screw things in if I have to. So I'm going to be working on that. So then, um, and because it's October, the other problem that we have here is leaves. You know, like, I figure any day now, and, and right now leaves are falling, and the worst thing about this is the leaves haven't covered the ground yet, so it's not too bad. But when there's enough leaves that cover all the grass, if you don't get the leaves picked up, next year the grass will be dead before it ever starts to grow. So I don't want mud everywhere, so I need to get the leaves picked up. So I figure that, you know, just writing a little list here for myself, it's going to take me, it takes me about three hours to do a whole cleanup of all the areas that need the leaves cleaned up at. Now that doesn't include the driveway because I usually use a leaf blower for that. But anyway, you're looking at three hours per cleanup and I got to do it three times a week for the next four weeks. So you're looking at 36, yeah, 36 hours of leaf raking, for lack of a better term for it, or leaf picking up or whatever you want to call it. I use a, my tractor and I have a bin a three bin bagger on the back, or yeah, bucket on the back of it. But you know what, that's such a pain to be jumping on and off the tractor. It's a lot easier if you start at one side and sort of blow things one direction, as long as the grass isn't high, and you can get it to blow to, into the woods if you want to. So that's just another thing I have to do. And again, 
I'm making this video not so much, you know, for the Josaljo channel, but my channel is so diverse with different things that I do. I'm trying to get you younger people to understand what some older people need. It's not your money, okay? It's not your car that you have. It's not your house that you have. It's not your clothing you have. We just need some freaking help, okay? Help. That's all it is. So, so since I don't see it happening, I figured I'll make a video about it. Maybe if one person helps their parents this weekend, my video is a success. All right, so anyway then, um, what do we got? Number three, which is the car inspection. Oh, and that car also needs brakes all around because, again, we're on a mountain and, you know, now the brakes I don't have. I have to buy them, so some brake pads won't be that much. But I don't have any squealing or anything, so I should be good to just put regular disc brakes on there. But what I'm getting at is, you know, this is the list of stuff that needs to be done. And I can go to, like, a, um, a brake place that fixes brakes, and I can pay $250 or $300 to do it. Or I can go and buy a set of brake lining for uh, $19 a set, so that would be um, uh, $38, and do the whole car. Well, guess which way I'm going, because I got the tools. All right, so that's number three. All right, so the number four I have down here, oh, that was the leaves. Yeah, the leaves was number four. So number five, uh, put the summer things away because summer's basically over. It's October. Things like the barbecue grill, the propane tank, benches I have outside. I've already put the grill and the tank away, but i got to get the benches put away. And believe it or not, the benches come in handy because, you know, my wife does a lot of walking to the chickens back and forth. I do a lot of walking, so we really appreciate having a place to sit down. That's why I put so many benches all over the place this past year. It just gives us a place to sit down for a second, if nothing else, just to take our little breather, which I know a lot of young people don't understand that. And, you know, they want to take a, they, they think that, oh, the parents have the money, they have this, that we should give, they should give us everything so we can go on with our life. That's not what the deals are, okay? The deal in this country should be that the children keep their promises to help take care of the kids. Because when they're little, they promise you these things. Yeah, mom and dad, I, I'm always going to be there to help you. As they grow older, it's like, oh, my wife wants to go to the movies. My wife wants to spend more money than we, we're making. Or my wife, or, or the husband, you know, I'm going to go buy a car that I don't need or whatever it is. The point is, is all I'm saying, and I don't care what you buy. I'm not depriving anybody of anything. I'm just saying there's some elderly out there that could use some help. Okay? Alright, so number five, put summer things away, okay? So basically, I'm just right here, clean up. And that's outside. So you're looking at things like the barbecue grill, the propane tank benches, the hoses have to get blown out. What I do with my hoses, instead of trying to put them inside because I don't really have room for them, I'll take an air, my air hose, my air uh, compressor, I'll lay the hose out in the driveway and just blow it out with, a, with an air chuck that I have. And by the time that blows that out, I can put that hose onto the hose rack that it hangs on. And then I don't have to do anything all winter with it. And come summer, I can hook that up. If we have a nice day in the middle of the year, like last year in January, we went up to 70 one, one day, which was crazy. But I actually washed cars in January just to get it done. So, you know, I can hook up the hose, blow it out again quick, and, and I'm in pretty good shape with that. So, um, you know, and you might want to... Maybe your parents or, or a neighbor or somebody needs something rolled up and put away, and there you go, you've done a good thing. Okay, so anyway, um, and we do this because of the frost that's a, that might be coming. No one has talked about frost in Pennsylvania. You know, it's like, it's like a, a, let's see, F-R-O-S-T, well, it's more than four letters, right? But the point is, is that in Pennsylvania, you know, snow is a four-letter word, so don't use snow. Uh, the frost, nobody wants to hear about frost because we're, we're dying to get the rest of the tomatoes to grow, but at the same time, the first frost, we've got to pick the tomatoes, whether they're green or red, you know, or the peppers, if the, whether they're big or small, they have to be picked because I can't heat the greenhouse. It wouldn't pay me to heat the greenhouse. All right, so then number six, um, after cleaning up, for my, me personally, I have to fix my backhoe motor. I mean, that's what the video was about previously. You guys know about that. I've been working on that thing, I've, I've been praying for the smallest problem, and I think it's going to end up one of the biggest problems. So, 
today I took the time to research where I could get the parts. I don't have a problem rebuilding engines. I rebuilt many engines in my days and they've all worked for me except one, okay? But all of them have worked and I knew what the problem was with that one. But the thing is, I don't have a problem rebuilding the engine, but it's hard to, you know, like with no help pulling that head out of here. So I devise ways to do things. I mean, that's what you have to do when you don't have the help. So, you know, I'll, I'll work on that uh, uh, and I'll try and get that thing finished because around here, we never know what's going to happen with the snow. Sometimes we can get three inches and four inches and maybe six inches and that's it. And then other times we can get 20 inches in one day, 20 inches the next day, and it's crazy. So we have to have something that can move that much snow. Now if I stay up with the snowstorm, I can move it with my pickup truck. But if I don't stay up, I can't really move it with my pickup truck because, you know, with, you're gathering a lot of snow. Sometimes it's an inch an hour, two inches an hour. So it adds up by the next morning. and depends on whether it's wet or not as well. So anyway, I have to fix my backhoe because I need that also to put the stuff onto the, um, to the sawmill. If I don't fix the backhoe, I have no hydraulics. And no hydraulics with 1,500 to 4,000 pound logs does not work. You've got to have hydraulics. Now the part, the part about the crane, and that's another thing I'm part of my list here, I wanted to get the crane done before Carmine left, but I wasn't able to do that because we had so much rain even when Carmine there was at least two, three days a week that we were missing work because of the rain. And I, the last thing I want to do, I, I did excavating for a lot of years, and along with building houses, I want you to understand I just didn't build houses, I built whole developments which means the roads and all the other things, pipes, whatever had to be done, we did in a, in a, in a project. So um, I had heavy equipment, and the heavy equipment, you know, when you dig a hole, if you leave it go and it rains, I don't have to tell you if you know anything about it, it becomes a mess. And I don't want a mess. I got enough problems, I don't want to be down there digging more and more dirt out just to clean up a mess, or to put rebar around the propane tank only to find out I got to take it back out. So I'm waiting for a couple of dry days, and we had one dry day this week, the rest of the days have been rain. Okay, so then number seven, uh, let's see, oh, okay, there we go, we're talking about the hole for the, uh, the crane. So let me just write crane hole here, I don't think that's obscene. So anyway, um, I want to prepare the hole, I want to put the reinforcing rod around the you know, propane tank, i got to cut the tank yet, I haven't even gotten to that. Uh, so that I can build the, the assembly that I need around the crane to be able to set it in there to be able to have it work. And I know I've had a lot of different uh, comments on how to do it or what to do. I already know what to do and I know what, how I'm going to do it. I just got to get it done and I'm not going to do anything else to the crane until I have that hole in the ground that's solid enough to hold that crane. That's what I'm looking for. So it may happen before winter comes. It all depends on what I, whether I can get all this work done or not ahead of time. Um, then the other thing is uh, in my kiln, I had mentioned the other day, I have that maple that we cut down. Uh, Carmine was with me when we cut it down. The tree looked like it was, a, like you could look at the birch bark, and, or not the birch bark, but the bark of this maple tree, and it totally made a twist all the way around to the top of the tree. People had said it was a hurricane, a twister. I don't know what it was, but I can tell you this. Cutting that thing up was a nightmare because even though it cut beautiful and the wood was really nice in most of it, it has twisted itself so bad it's going to be firewood. So i got to clean that out of the kiln. And the thing is, is a lot of that I cut into two inch stuff because I wasn't sure if the two inch would keep it from twisting. It has not. Whether it's one or two inches twisting, they're pretty much the same. And I have to do something with it. So I need to get that out of there. And that's a headache because you got to get it out of the kiln then i got to cut it up, then i got to split it if I'm going to be using it for firewood. So number eight is the, uh, to clean out the maple out of the kiln. <sighs> and then number nine on my list here, I have to prepare the tractors and my truck for snow plowing. So what I do every year then is I drain the fluid out of the you know, snow plow. And this is not a big job, but it's still a job that has to be done. i got to drain the fluid out of the snow plow. Then they got to put new fluid in because there's antifreeze in that stuff to keep it from freezing. And I noticed this year, like I have a bunch of hoses in there that I that are packaged for this plow, and luckily I don't have to buy them. But I need to replace hoses that go to the uh, 
from the plow motor and the plow pump down to the uh, um, cylinders that turn the plow. So I have to replace those hoses. And again, you know, okay, it doesn't seem like a hard job, but if I go to return, turn the, one of the hoses out and the fitting breaks off, this could turn into a, you know, six-hour job compared to something that would have normally taken a half an hour or so. All right, so that's the snow plow hoses. And these are things that I was hoping to be able to teach Carmine about. And maybe once he's out of school and, you know, he's not, um, I know it's my daughter, but he's not, uh, you know, chained. And he can do some free things on his own. Maybe he'll want to come around and do the rest of that for me. I don't know. I, I just hope he does. All right, so uh, that's the snowplow number nine. Then uh, number ten, you're looking at, uh, I have to fill my coal bin. Um, a lot of people have thought that that bin I have out there was for different reasons. It's actually a coal bin with the, that has the maple decorated in front of it. And I put coal in there. Three tons of coal carries me for the year. Now, there was a time when I would show, I would stop at the coal yard, get a half a ton of coal every couple days until I filled that bin and just shovel it in there. But because I didn't want to have to pay for the truck to bring it. But now it's getting to the point where, you know what, I think I'm going to let the truck bring it and let them dump it in there. Because I'm getting too tired of doing it. And I'm getting to the point where I can't get caught up with my other work. So, um, I'll just put, let's see, number 10 would be to get coal. I don't even know if you can see that down there. And then I have two more things here. You had 11 and 12. So, if you remember, I was up at the house the other day, and getting that house done is a priority for me. But it's not the top of the list priority, okay? Because it's closed in, and nothing is getting ruined in the house because the roof is on it. Um, I don't have to worry about it, all right? So all I have to do is go there when I want to, when I want to, and do the work. So, I want to get that work done, but the other day when I was up there, sun was shining, went up with my generator, I had it on my trailer because I didn't want to have to try and lug it off onto the porch because it's a, uh, an 8,000 BTU, uh, not BTU, but 8,000 watt generator, so it's fairly heavy. I can't pick it up by myself, and I had it outside. Well, don't you know... It's sunny, 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 I'm up there cutting, I'm up there cutting, I'm nailing base, whatever. All of a sudden we get a, a, a rainstorm come out of, I don't know where, but the generator stopped running. So apparently something burned up in it. Now, I know there's a little diode pack of some sort in the back of it, and maybe that's the problem. But, you know, and I'll try that first, but I think it's shot because I'm getting some black stuff coming out between the engine, and it's not oil, between the engine and the generator. It looks like it might be some kind of fibers that were inside there that make the, you know, that something from the armature or from the field. I'm not sure what it is. So I either have to buy or fix another that generator. Now here's the thing. I have three other generators, but the two of them, one's in a box. It's this little thing from Harbor Freight, 600, 800 watts. I have a generator sitting in my little, little shed over here with my tractor, 800 watts. But I have another 8,500 watt generator, but it's in my uh, metal box that powers the house. So it's really hard to take that out of there. I have it fixed so that it cools itself in there. But if I take it out, then I got to put it back in. And right now I can't do that because I need help for that, and I really don't have any help. All right. So then, and then you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not anybody who knows me that's watching these videos. I know offers to help me. It's not always, it's not easy or convenient to have somebody say, well, I'll help you on Saturday and come, because it's Saturday may be too late, or Saturday may not be working for me. So, I'm just saying. All right, so then number 12, the last thing is that I need you to know, and what I would like the young people to know, is that snow plowing, for us, takes precedence over everything else. Because if we can't get out of here, that's a problem. If we can't walk to the chickens, that's a problem. We, if we can't walk the dog, that's a problem. Okay? And, and those things we have to be able to do. We have to be able to get to the store or to the hospital if we need. We have to be able to get to the chickens because they're, they're locked up over there. They need food and water. It would be inhuman to be, or, yeah, inhuman to be able to not go there. And Bullseye would eat a hole through my garage if I did not take him out. So he needs to get out. So that's why we have to do the plowing. So when I say this, 
you know, snow plowing, I mean, in a timely manner, okay? This is not when someone else decides they're going to do it. It's a matter of, I need it done now. There was a time when I thought that, you know, some, some of my children would come back and help to do some stuff. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen. It's more or less, unless Dad has something to give them, Dad doesn't see them. I'm sorry to say that, but and there's probably a whole lot more parents out there besides me who have the same problem. But anyway, what I'm talking about is I help a lot of my neighbors. There's not one neighbor who ever came here that did not get the help they needed. And mainly because I have everything I need to do stuff. Just like I'm saying about the car and all these other things. I pretty much have everything here to make all these repairs and stuff, except for the, you know, the backhoe parts, because I don't know what they are yet, and um, the, uh, the brake lining for the car I don't have. But I do have brake lining for all my trucks, because the two trucks take the same type of lining, the other truck is slightly different, but I do have that stuff. So, what I'm trying to say here is, if you can do these things, do not be afraid to give some of your time away. You don't need to be paid for every single thing you do. Okay, I don't care whether you're working or not working. There are little things you can do for some people who you could help out. Now, when Carmine's here, we pay Carmine. That's, you know, that's just the way it is because he, he does a good job, he's worth it, and we do pay him. If I have somebody come here to do housekeeping for us when my wife is not feeling well, we pay them. But what I'm saying to you is, you know, it's, and in most cases, the elderly are willing to pay for this. They'll, they're willing to pay you something. But, you know, to expect $40 an hour from somebody that's getting, I don't know, 1000 or $2,000 a year in pension money is a little ridiculous, don't you think? So, you know, maybe you could do it for, like, just to do it. Just to, to do it. Even if you took it on as a regular thing, like if your neighbor needs their sidewalk shovel, and, and they can't get out there, how hard is it for you to shovel another 20 or 30 feet if you live in town? Now, naturally, if you're living where I live, you know, to do your neighbor's plowing, my plowing alone here takes at least a half an hour. So, you know, I understand not too many people are going to volunteer for that, but at the same time, I plow four other driveways that volunteer. I don't get paid for that. I get paid for one long one. I don't get paid for the short ones. So... Anyway, guys, I hope that it helps you people that are older to realize that there's someone out there that recognizes your plight that you're in, and that there's someone out there who wants to tell the youth to get up off your dead butt and go do some things for someone, and do them for free, and see what that's like, okay? See what that's like. It doesn't hurt you, and I guarantee you what you get back will be much better. I remember the front, I'll just tell you one little story quick. I was building a, uh, a room for an Italian couple many, many years ago. This guy was so nice and his wife, they were so nice it was unbelievable. Anyway, I'm building this uh, addition for them and they're saying to me that they have to have this thing done by the 4th of July and it was like the 2nd of July and the, the, the roof was barely on this addition. So we, we were working like 16, 18 hours a day. I was really putting some time in on this. And the, the, and the night of the 3rd, Believe it or not, I was hanging light fixtures in the house, and the floor covering was down. I had uh, one of my boys at the time was pretty young, and it was near Christmas or near uh, the Fourth of July. They had off of school. He actually fell asleep on the floor. I was there so late at night. The day after their their party that they had for the Fourth with their family, this woman calls me up and you know like at ten o'clock in the morning and asks me if I can come up there. She wants to show me something. I go up and I'll tell you what. This lady had for me the biggest tray of buffalo wings that she just made with some kind of sauce that was not hot sauce, it was like tomato sauce, out of this world. Never expected it. You know what, she could have paid me a million dollars and I wouldn't have remembered that, but that, those chicken wings, I remember. So maybe something like that will come to your way and it will be a good thing for you. So in closing, I hope I didn't offend anybody, but you know what? Oh well, doesn't bother me to tell somebody what should be going on. And you guys even know in your hearts that this is the right thing to do. So go and do it. Hey, have a good one. Oh, and guys, I just want to say one more thing. 
again, not to offend people, however, here's something you need to know. I taught at a college, okay? So what I'm going to tell you is this. Your sons and daughters are not really working that hard, okay? You can expect them to do some things for you. Do not think that they sit there at, at, the cl at class and are diligently doing their work. 90% of them do not. I can tell you that. They have time to do some stuff for you. So when they come home from college, ask them to work for you. It will help build a great work ethic in them. They will understand what you need and it will be good for both of you. Okay. But don't be making it so easy for our kids today that they don't even understand what snow shoveling is. Have a good one, guys.